Factor investing, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to go about investing. It asks the question, what drives stock returns? And then laser focuses on those factors to form portfolios that have a higher likelihood to beat the market over the long term. And in my last coffee hour video just last week, I talked about how the market value and momentum have historically had the largest factor premiums. For a factor investor, this means that targeting portfolios of value and momentum stocks can potentially bring about market beating returns if an investor has the discipline and fortitude to stick with the strategy. However, this is not the end of the story. Targeting value and momentum has additional benefits that every investor should know about. Investors looking to beat the market must be aware that unless they find a true anomaly or are able to arbitrage a riskless profit, they need to target higher risk in order to attain higher returns. In fact, this is what the father of efficient markets, Eugene Fama, proposed. In an efficient market, higher returns must come from targeting higher risk factors while luck and skill have a residual effect on portfolio construction. Behaviorists, on the other hand, would argue that premia can appear in places where it is too painful or costly from a career standpoint to arbitrage these anomalies. Therefore, the market beating portfolios are available, they're too painful for the average investor. This is the case for factor investing. Concentrated value and momentum portfolios naturally tend to show higher volatility than a passive index and can underperform for longer than factor investors would like to admit, making it pretty hard for the average investor to stick with factor portfolios. However, there is good news for those looking to target factors and want a less painful ride. In the 2013 paper, Value and Momentum Everywhere, Cliff Asnes, Tobias Moskowitz, and Lasse Peterson from AQR examined value and momentum across asset classes and global markets to find consistent positive premia, but also they find that value and momentum are negatively correlated with each other, both within and across asset classes. Meaning that when holding a long short value portfolio, it tends to move differently to a long short momentum portfolio. Here's Alpha Architect President Ryan Curlin explaining why this negative correlation is key for factor investors. Value and momentum are basically doing the opposite things. When you're buying value stocks, you're buying things that people hate. And when you're buying momentum stocks, you're buying stocks that people love. Stocks that have gone up the most over the, you know, generally the last year. That's what you want to do when you build a portfolio is build things that are doing opposite things. Because when value stocks then are doing well, generally speaking, momentum stocks aren't doing as well. And when momentum stocks are doing well, right, when those hot stocks are flying, often those hated value stocks are not doing as well. But when you're building an overall portfolio, that's good though. You want to build things that do different things. So, hey, let's put them together. Uh, smooth out the ride over the long term and give ourselves a little diversification. This negative correlation, therefore, should help investors stick with strategies, since at the portfolio level, returns can be less volatile and more reliable. Meanwhile, value and momentum are like the yin and yang of investing. Their paths are so different that a value investor could benefit from holding a momentum portfolio. And likewise, a momentum investor can gain from holding a value portfolio if these dynamics persist into the future. Nowhere is this clearer than during the dot-com bubble, where momentum portfolios were skyrocketing while value lagged. And then when the bubble burst and sentiment shifted, value went on to have one of its most epic runs and momentum crashed. You can see how a value investor who only held value and a momentum investor who only held momentum would have likely given up on their program at some point during this period. But an investor who held both of them at the same time only benefited from these correlation dynamics while also earning market beating returns during that period. In fact, momentum and value can work so well together that historically, building a portfolio of value and momentum means that holding a passive index may no longer be optimal according to modern portfolio theory. And this is the finding in the 2016 book, Quantitative Momentum where Wes Gray and Jack Vogel built an efficient frontier 
based on historical returns from 1927 to 2014. When using long-term bonds and the S&P 500, a sizable weight is given to the S&P 500. However, when introduced to value and momentum, the optimizer recommends a 0% allocation to the passive index in favor of long-only value, momentum, and long-term bonds. Meaning that during this period, value and momentum stocks were the only equity exposures needed in order to build a reasonable portfolio, no matter the risk tolerance of the investor. Now, a factor investor does not necessarily only have to hold value and momentum portfolios. After all, adding the market can bring about benefits beyond what the math may suggest, as some investors prefer to not deviate too much from the market. And when it comes to investing, optimizing for behavior is primordial. So think of factors as another tool in the portfolio construction toolbox. Notice that those tools are there and that they can be potentially beneficial. And if you do use them, make sure to spend time educating yourself on how to be best effective with them. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And more importantly, share this video with a friend. Also, make sure to head to alphaarchitect.com slash subscribe and there make sure to subscribe to the blog where you can find more educational resources like this one. Lastly, make sure to follow me on TikTok at Coffee Hour with Jose. I'll see you next time.